All right, in this video, I'm gonna go over my SCAR 16S modeled after a Mark 16 Mod Zero, which was a rifle used by SOCOM um, in the early 2000s. So this rifle had very high expectations um, originally in its uh, development and its adoption by US SOCOM. Uh, the rifle was slated to replace the M4 carbine, which although it was used after its development and adoption, in that role, the M4A1 eventually replaced the M4 carbine in a more substantial um, and more universal way in the military. So while this R16 did everything that it was expected to do, and there was you know a lot of positive feedback for the SCAR rifles, the SCAR 16, the, the dedicated 556 rifle that you see here, was eventually phased out and the military ended up only sticking with the SCAR-17 or the SCAR-Heavy um, just due to it being a different caliber that had a you know a lot of inherent benefits in that. So the SCAR-16 kind of fell to the wayside and while FN up until a couple of years ago still sold this rifle, um, you don't see them nearly as much as the SCAR-17. Uh, when you think of the SCAR, um, most people will think of the heavier 308 version, but in my opinion, the SCAR-16 is still a very viable rifle on today's market, and there's a lot of rifles that owe their lineage directly to the SCARs. The SCAR is a short-stroke gas system with a monolithic upper receiver made of extruded aluminum and a folding stock, and just those three characteristics right there describe a lot of modern rifles <laughs> that didn't exist before the SCAR. Um, one example that I can think of is the CZ Bren, either the Bren 2 or the original 805 Bren. Both of those functionally are extremely similar to the SCAR. So, um, getting into my rifle here, uh, mine is an, obviously an origin, original Belgian FN SCAR 16S, um, but saying that it's a Belgian SCAR 16S is kind of superfluous because they never made the SCAR 16S in America. Um, while they picked up production of the SCAR-17 and the SCAR-20 in America once FN moved to their plant here, uh, the SCAR-16s have yet to go into production, and because they halted importation of the Belgian SCAR-16s, these have kind of disappeared from the market in the past couple of years, driving the price, you know, way up. Um, but going back even farther than that, um, there's a couple generations of SCAR-16. Mine is a Generation 1, and what kind of gives that away is namely the presence of the black button for folding the stock. The newer versions would have a tan button to signify that it's a stronger, more reinforced um, button that's not as prone to snapping. And also, you can see that the color of the upper receiver, the lower receiver, and the stock are all much more similar in tone than the newer SCAR rifles. Uh, the newer rifles, you can tell right away the lower receiver is more of a kind of an orangish brown color. It's not a light tan that matches the rest of the rifle as well as mine does here. So to some people, that makes this a more desirable product, depending on your outlook. Uh, for a clone rifle, this one's more appropriate. It looks more like the military's Mark 16s. But if you are looking for the most practical version of the SCAR-16, you're probably going to want to hunt down the newer ones that have that reinforced stock latch button. So, uh, getting into uh, the parts list for this, it's pretty straightforward. Um, unlike a lot of clones, which you have to build piece by piece, your only real option to build a SCAR-16 is to buy the complete rifle and then configure it the way you want in terms of barrel length and accessories and that sort of thing. So, the SCAR-16S will come right out of the box with... Uh, the quick change barrel, which you can do what I've done here and swap to the 10 inch barrel upon receiving your SBR tax stamp. And then you'll already have the clone correct set of iron sights out of the box. Um, so that really all that leaves you with is just putting uh, on a correct suppressor, the correct optic, and then if you so choose, the correct uh, laser and flashlight. So um, while these are very pricey, rifles, and uh, that's one reason you'll see as many of them as you will Mark 18s or other rifles that are, you know, typically more commonly seen because they're cheaper. Um, these are very easy clones to build in general. So as far as optics go for these, 
I'm rocking an EOTech 553, which has the SU-231 slash PEQ military markings on the other side. I'll clip in a photo of that here. Um, that was the main optic that was seen on these. They have been seen with some updated optics. Um, they've also been seen with Trigicon ACOGs. Uh, it was the specific variant of the ACOG, the ECOS. And I'm forgetting the exact military designation for it, but it was the tannidized uh, version that had a piggyback red dot. Um, they've been seen with those, they've been seen with um, aim points on some of the newer iterations of the rifle. Uh, they've been seen with LCANs and a couple other kind of oddball optics, but generally you'll see a lot of the same optics that were used on Mark 18s and other SOP Mod Block 2 weapons. So uh, the suppressor uh, is one of the few things that's somewhat unique to this rifle. Um, this uses a M4-2000. Uh, which I have here an M4-2000, so while the suppressor is technically the correct model, uh, the flash hider that mounts to is not correct. Um, if you're familiar with AAC's line of suppressors, you'll know that um, the majority of their suppressors use um, a 51T uh, or 51 teeth uh, suppressor mount, which is the number of teeth on the ratcheting system that the suppressor locks onto. Um, but AAC originally designed this with an 18-tooth version of the mount. And those versions of the mount and the suppressor are basically gone from the market. They're not available. Um, so this is really as close as you're going to get if you're looking at build one, building one of these rifles. It'll be a 51-tooth M4-2000. So uh, as far as infrared lasers, illuminators would go, these were seen with PEC-15s and uh, LA-5 PEC-15s. There have been a couple photos of PEC 2s also floating around on these, um, just because of you know how old this rifle is getting in terms of military service. Uh, it, they do go back to the PEC 2 era before PEC 15s were the standard. Uh, as far as flashlights go, uh, they were seen with the Insight M3X and the Insight WMX 200, as well as uh, Surefire Scout lights on more modern setups. Um, for some of you, it may be confusing that I keep referring to, you know, the modern 16S or the modern SCAR 16 or modern Mark 16. And there, there's a reason for that. These are not still issued in the form you see them here today as a dedicated 5.56 rifle. Um, the dedicated 5.56 rifles are basically gone. They were usurped by the M4A1 carbine. Um, the form you see these rifles in today is actually as the Mark 17 Mod Zero, the 308 version with a 5.56 conversion lower receiver, which is issued with the guns. Nine, 99 times out of 100, if you see these rifles with a 5.56 magazine sticking out of them, it's actually a Mark 17 uh, that's been converted to 5.56 as far as military service goes. So I'll roll in a couple photos of that um, just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But on the civilian market, that was never an option for us. We couldn't just buy a SCAR-17 and then be able to convert it to both calibers. We had to buy both rifles if you wanted to be able to shoot both bullets out of them. So, um, kind of disappointing to see FN doing that, but at the same time, um, I understand that not everybody would be willing to, you know, fork over $2,500 to $3,500 for a rifle and then pay another probably $2,000 for the kit to convert it. Because the kit consists of the barrel, which FN retails for about $1,100, a lower receiver, which I can only guess would be several hundred dollars on its own, a new bolt, and uh, new magazines. So all that together would cost um, a good portion of what the rifle itself costs. So FN was probably just surmising that people aren't going to pay that, just release two different rifles, and people can choose which one they want. And if they really want both calibers, they'll buy both rifles. And... For the most part, they were right. People like me ended up buying both rifles. So, <laughs> anyway, um, you might be thinking, why would you want to run a SCAR 16 in the year 2021? You know, there's be there's better options out there. There's stuff that's lighter, has less recoil. Um, I would argue there's not too many platforms that are more reliable than the SCAR 16, and that's the big shining point for these. I have yet to clean this rifle in my years and years of owning it. And it call me lazy. <laughs> um, you know, call me irresponsible. Um, I don't believe I've damaged this rifle to any extent by not cleaning it. Uh, it's doing exactly what it's meant to do. It's working in very suboptimal conditions. Uh, even running it suppressed, I'm still getting carbon that's caking up in my 
uh, on my bolt, in my action, my chamber. And yet when I load a magazine up and toss it in the gun and rack it, it still racks just as smooth as the day I bought it. So um, that at least is in a testament to FN's quality and their precision engineering and design. Um, eventually I will clean this rifle. I'm planning on sometime in the next month having one big cleaning day where I clean everything in the safe because I haven't cleaned anything since probably last year. Um, and this thing will probably get its first cleaning at some point, but um, I honestly don't think it's necessary. It has run flawless since the day I got it, and I'm sure it would go probably several thousand more rounds without a cleaning, but that is the biggest selling point that I can say for the SCAR-16. It's very low maintenance, it's incredibly reliable, and performance is on par with any high-end you know, AR-15 or other platform. So, um, unfortunately, like I said earlier, you cannot buy these right now from FN or from a retailer new since they have not imported them in quite some time. You can still find them on the secondhand market, but you will end up paying a premium, especially right now in 2021 with everything that's going on right now. Uh, these may cost as much as or more than their 308 counterpart, counterpart which is not typical. Um, typically, the SCAR-16 costs a little bit less, but uh, supply and demand is a very real thing in the firearms world, and the FN SCAR is no exception to that. So, uh, good luck if you're looking to build one of these. I highly recommend them. They're fantastic rifles, and they just have a classic look to them. Not a, not a lot of rifles can rival as far as just nostalgia goes for, you know, people in a certain age group. So, anyway, I'll end the video by saying, um, if you're into this kind of thing... Uh, you know, cloning rifles from early global war on terror up until modern day, or if you just like seeing this type of content, um, feel free to subscribe and drop a like on the video. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to drop them down below. I'm more than happy to interact with you guys and, you know, talk with you. So if you have any, uh, anything like that, drop it down below and thank you for watching.